Hi, dear colleagues, and welcome to this dental case. In this dental case, I would like to talk to you about a triple DME, deep margin elevation case, and three indirect and one direct restoration that I made. Let's get started. Okay, let's talk about deep margin elevation and indirect restorations. This is the initial situation of this case. And as you can see, there are some failing composite restorations. On the lower left, you can see the bite wing and on the radiograph, you can see that there are some leaking margins on the second molar and the first molar. Um, and you can also see when we look at the pre-op photograph intra orally that the restorations don't have the desired curvature and not the desired contact point. So this patient was complaining a lot about irritated gums and food infection. So we decided to remove the restorations and see what was underneath. Since I was already planning or had in mind that this could turn out to be indirect restorations, I always start with taking my shade photos. So what I did, I got a black contrastor and a, a black cheek protector, um, and I made photos uh, just in a normal way that I take my photos, but also with a cross polarization filter. And you can see that on the next photo, the cross polarization filter will take out all the glare of the photo and we can see more of the real color of the tooth. Uh, and this is a really helpful tool to show to your dental technician. I also take the same photos with a shade tab. In this case, it was an A2 shade tab. And here you can see the cross polarized picture and you can see that it's a fairly good match and all these pictures i sent them to my dental technician so they have a sense of what's going on on the teeth here we can see the situation after isolation and i since i only had two hours for this appointment which was a bit short i decided to start with the molars first so i first remove the restorations in the first and second molar, since I didn't know how much time it would take me to finish this case. And I don't want to prep uh, all the teeth, four teeth in this case, and then find out that I need way more time. So I decided to start with the first and second molar first. Here's what they look like after restoring or after removing the restoration and removing all the decay. You can see that there is a bit of leakage on the distal side of the first molar and there was some blood contamination. In this case, to do a deep margin elevation, since these margins were too deep to restore directly, um, I decided to use a matrix in matrix technique. There's a new article uh, by Pascal Magne that describes this technique and I will uh, name the article later. Um, but when we look at this case, um, we do, we want to do a deep margin elevation and a deep margin elevation or cervical margin relocation or box elevation or whatever you like to call it is essentially applying a little bit of composite to raise the outline of your preparation a bit. And by raising the outline, we, uh, uh, we can take easier impressions. It's easier to isolate. And therefore, it's easier to cement our final restoration. So what we do, we raise the margin with a little bit of flowable or a little bit of composite. And in most cases, you don't need more than one to two or three millimeters. There it's, it's, it's rarely that you need more than, than, than that because you can always use some additional tricks with your isolation or with your impression taking. So what I did in this case, I used a double matrix technique. I used an auto matrix and then I used a partial matrix band to put it in between. So the auto matrix is my guide for my partial matrix. So the partial matrix slides in between the auto matrix and between the tooth. And I can use some PTFE to make sure it's packed properly. And you can see the PTFE in between both bands. And you can see that my margin is perfectly um, isolated perfectly sealed. And now I can use a little bit of uh, flowable or composite to raise this margin. As you can see on the mesial side, there isn't that good of a seal, but that's not really important since this outline was already higher than my rubber dam. So this is an outline that I also could have restored um, without using any bands at all. 
And here you can see the situation after uh, deep margin elevation. What I did, I used my AquaCare uh, air abrasion device to aerobrate the surface. Then I used OptiBond FL. I used the etchant for 30 seconds on the, on the enamel, 15 seconds on the dentin. And then after rinsing thoroughly with water, I used my OptiBond FL primer for 20 seconds and then my OptiBond FL bonding. And after light curing, I placed a little bit of Flowball Majesty ES2 by Curare just to raise the margin a little bit. And after removal of the bench, you can still see that there's a little bit of excess uh, of the cement, but that's something that I can easily remove when all the deep margin elevations are done. This first motor is now done, and now I move on to the second motor. And there we see the same problem. We see that the outline is deep, lower than my rubber dam, and we can see that there's a little bit of contamination on the mesial side. So what I do, I place my band over there, I repeat the same process, and then it looks like this. Here you can also see that I raised the margin a little bit, also using the same technique with the AquaCare, OptiPontefel, and Majesty Flow. Then I decided that I had enough time to also go to the second premolar. I removed the entire restoration there and I repeated the same process. And as you can see on this slide, I also cut my matrix band a little bit because it was too long to push it in between my auto matrix and the tooth. So I cut the, um, the rounded parts off so I, could sl I can slide it in between and I repeated the same process again. And here you can see what it looks like. And then I went on to the first premolar. The, the first premolar had a failing composite restoration with some secondary decay. And I decided to do a direct restoration on this one. I used the same technique with the matrix in matrix technique to restore the entire surface. Since I didn't need to do any deep margin elevation, I used both bands to give me a really nice contour of the tooth. I used the same process, so the AquaCare, the OptiBond of L, the Majesty Flow, and then I used um, Shofu Beautiful 2 LS in the A2 color. It's a really nice composite by Shofu, and I used that to restore the entire surface. And then I used a little bit of tint by Kerr. It's a brown tint to, uh, to give some characterizations to the fissures. And this is what it looks like after the direct restoration. I only need to polish it right now. And this is what the entire situation looks like after the appointment uh, or after the deep margin elevation. Initially, I had two hours and after that was my lunch break. And since it was a pretty hard case, I decided to work on during my lunch break. And overall, it took me three hours to complete this case. So what I did was three deep margin elevations and one direct restoration in three hours. And this is what it looks like just before impression taking. I did a deep margin elevation, so the margins are raised, but I still need some retraction cord to make sure that my outline um, is properly in the impression. In this case, I use the best cord by Circamet. It's one of my favorite cords, um, and I always use this purple one. Um, I really like it, um, and it's a really nice retraction cord. After placing the retraction cord, you can still see that there's a bit of contamination by blood. I can remove that with a, with a, uh, with a slightly wet micro brush, and then I can take my impression. And on the lower left, you can see the x-ray after the deep margin elevation is done. Even though some people think it's a controversial or new technique, there's actually done a lot of research. Um, there is a lot of research done by Marco Gresnig, Pascal Magne, David Chardol, and many others. And there's even an article that shows the 12 year follow up, and it shows a really, really good outcome. And um, it's a really nice alternative uh, opposed to surgical crown lengthening. So here are some articles that describe this, but there are many, many other articles as well. Well, I sent my impression to my dental technician, in this case, Qualident Dental Studio in the Netherlands, and they made this wax up. And after the wax up, they used an Emacs press technique to make 
the lithium disilicate restorations. And I asked them to make a lot of photographs of this project since I wanted to make this video about it. Here you can see the restorations, how they are pressed. And here you can see them when they are, uh, um, when they are glazed um, and when all the intricate details are applied. And you can see on the right side with my shade tab that it's a nice uh, match with the initial shade that I took on one of the first slides. Here you can see them a little bit more in detail, and these are all partial indirect restorations. And here they are on the stone model. The patient comes back um, after around three to four weeks, and this is what the situation looks like after removing the temporary restorations. You can see that the gum looks quite healthy, you can see that all the margins are above the gums and it makes my life easier when I want to cement the indirect restorations. So this uh, is the situation after removal of the restorations, the temporary restorations, and now I isolate the teeth again. This is what it looks like. I do a dry fit of my uh, restorations. So I check them, I see how they are if, are, if there are any contact points that I need to worry about. Sometimes the rubber dam can give a little bit of mesial traction um, and your final restoration won't properly fit. It all has to do with the mesial traction that happens and you can sometimes use a wedge to give some counter pressure. But in this case, the restorations uh, have a nice fit um, even though it looks like uh, some of the margins are off, that's always the case when you're just trying them. But once you put a little bit of pressure on them and you push them down, you will see that the margin is quite good. And here I took some artistic photograph with them half in place to show you what the restorations look like. When I'm going to cement these restorations, even though the outline is properly exposed, I always want to use a little bit of Teflon to um, create a little bit of space between my outline and my indirect restoration. By creating the space, uh, usually around one millimeter, I give myself the chance to remove any excess of my heated composite. Uh, so it's easier for me to remove that excess and get a smoother transition between my restoration and the outline of the tooth. And here you can see a close up picture of the um, Teflon and it creates a little bit of a gap between my rubber dam and uh, the tooth uh, and therefore I get a better retraction and I get more space between the, the rubber dam and the tooth. And in this video I will show you how I do this. It's not an easy technique and I always use two instruments to do this. To record this my assistant held my mirror and I use two instruments, a flat plastic and a periodontal probe to guide the Teflon apically in between the rubber dam and the tooth. The, it's pretty hard to apply it. So you need one instrument to put pressure and then the other instrument to push it down and slide it to the side to make sure that you put it um, in between the rubber dam and the tooth. I use a sort of swiping motion to make sure that it's, um, uh, that it's packed properly. Well, what I do, I apply the Teflon in between the teeth, but I also apply a little bit of Teflon on the neighboring tooth that I'm not going to restore directly to cover it and make sure that there isn't any bonding or any composite on that tooth. Since if it sticks on, the, on there, there might be a chance that my direct or my indirect restoration won't fit anymore. So that's the reason why I covered the first motor with some Teflon here. You can see there's a lot of excess of composite. I use heated HFO um, UD2. It's a composite by Mycerium and it's a really nice uh, composite that has some texotropic characteristics, which means if you put some pressure, it becomes quite liquid. 
And if you let it go, let it set, it becomes more stiff and it's easier to, re to remove. And by using this, I can get a really nice blend between my restoration and my tooth and I get a really good bond strength. Here you can see the axis and then I can remove the axis with all kinds of instruments, micro brushes, other brushes. Um, and then after light curing, it looks like this. And then I can go on to the first molar. I place the Teflon over there. I cover the neighboring teeth. And then I can, I can cement that one. Here you can see the Teflon uh, in place. And I place my composite directly on the tooth and then put my indirect restoration on there. And this is what it looks like after cementation, after removing all of the excess. No polishing was done here. This was just after removing the, the composite. So you can see that the uh, integration of the margins is already really good. And there's a really nice fit Otherwise, you won't have this result only after removing the axis of composite. And then we move on to the, to the second premolar and we repeat the same process. We can see the axis of composite. And this is what it looks like after uh, all the teeth are cured. And I also already did a little bit of polishing. You can see a little bit of blood on the buckle side of the uh, uh, of the first molar. I use some IPR strips to make sure that the outline is really smooth. I can also use some ultrasonic tips that are perfect for polishing in between the contact points. Um, and I also use some, um, some polishing uh, discs and polishing burrs that I use on the uh, incisal edges on the transition between my indirect restoration and, uh, and the tooth itself. Here we can see from another angle that the anatomy is really nicely uh, restored uh, and that they uh, that the restorations integrate really well. And it looks like just a natural dentition right now. And here we can see the situation after removal of the rubber dam. And you can also see the final x-ray of the result. And here we have the situation again from another angle. And we can see a really nice integration and we can see that it looks that it looks really well this was my video thank you very much for watching if you like this video please make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel because it would help me but it would also help other dentists to find this channel and to learn hopefully more thank you very much hope to see you soon bye